The interview subject is Depression Survivors Part 3. The interviewees are Mr. and Mrs. George Miller, and it is being recorded in their new Westminster home on March the 12th, 1999, at 1.30 p.m. The interviewer is Dick Ramsey. Mr. and Mrs. George Miller experienced the Depression in New Westminster during its entirety, from 1929 to 1939. Mr. Miller was born in New Westminster in 1913. Mrs. Miller was born in 1915 in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and came to Portman, B.C. in 1916, and moved to New Westminster in 1917. The purpose of interviewing Mr. and Mrs. Miller is to discover from them what the Depression meant to them and how they were able to deal with it. Probably the best way to handle this situation is to start by asking Mr. Miller to say what the Depression meant to him and then, after he is finished, to ask Mrs. Miller to do the same thing. Now, I, I do not wish to interrupt you, but there may be times when I might have to ask you something for clarification. After you both have spoken, it might be a good idea for us to have a discussion, to pick up points that you might have desire to say, but at the time didn't think of them, and I'll probably have a number of questions I might want to ask as well. However, we'll, we'll wait until that time comes. First of all, first of all, may I say that the view from your apartment is absolutely overwhelming and beautiful. A panoramic display uh, it is so natural that it is almost artificial. No, no, I'm just fooling. <laughs> I'm just fooling. On the left, I, I see the river winding its way uh, up the Fraser Valley. And on the right, I can almost see the Gulf Islands. You are very fortunate to have such a lovely place and such a magnificent, magnificent view. Well, perhaps we should start and uh, with George's statement. George has written a statement, but Marion uh, Miller is going to read it for us. Would you like to go ahead, Marion? Yes. George was born December 9, 1913, in a home built by his father at 515 First Street in New Westminster. His father, Albert George Miller, had been born in Pennsylvania. He and his father's forefathers had all been cigar makers originating in Bavaria, Germany. They had their own cigar factory in Pennsylvania, but in 1906, Albert and his brother William decided to go west. They arrived in San Francisco the day after the big earthquake of 1906. William did not continue, but Albert came to Canada and met his wife, Catherine, Annie Catherine, who was working in a department store in Kamloops. She was born in Underwood, Ontario, of good Scotch stock. Married in Vancouver, they honeymooned in Seattle, returned to live on Curie Street in New Westminster until their home was built in 1911. This home is still standing and in good repair, though some of the stained glass has been removed in the intervening years. We went through it some years ago when it was for sale and have pictures taken in 1911 and when we last went through. Even at that time, there were still pole chain lights and an unfinished basement. Albert had his own cigar factory on Victoria Street between 4th and 6th, a very short street below Agnes Street. George and Bill, his brother, well remember their father bringing home cigars to have the label Beaver wrapped around each cigar. He made very good money at that time, but like many others, invested too much in land, in New Westminster and in Queensboro, 
and in 1919 lost even the home they had on First Street. From First Street they rented a home in the 100 block Queens Avenue, but were not there very long. They then moved to 400 block on the north side of 6th Avenue. George had already started school at Herbert Spencer. They then bought a home at 243 Boyne Street in U.S. in Queensburg. This was 1922. George had about two years of schooling at Queen Elizabeth School, then walked uptown to the Howie School. This was located on Merle Avenue between 6th and 7th Street. After this, he attended T.J. Trap Technical on 8th Street. At this time, he had a paper route, and to get his papers, he walked all the way to New Westminster, from Queensboro, back to Queensboro, delivered the papers in Queensboro, which was a distance of some miles. At the age of 15, he started work in the BC Manufacturing, then known as the Box Factory. But when reaching the age of 21, he was told he was no longer employed because the minimum wage had come in and he would have to be paid 25 cents per hour. He was at this time earning 18 cents an hour. Grandpa Miller had a friend who owned a shingle mill, so George worked at the mill, and instead of pay, his father got shingles to shingle the house. At that time, he went fishing up north on a stainer. They worked from 5 in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. The price for the fish was 10 cents per fish. After fishing finished, there was no work, so he went on what was known as relief. The only one to support a family of three sisters, a brother, a mother, and father. Six dollars was given in script to exchange for food. Another six dollars was given for working, digging ditches, etc., at Queen's Park. In the meantime, he was looking for work, walking from Queensboro as far as Fraser Mills to the big Canadian Western Lumber Company. This was a distance of at least four to five miles each way. There was no money for car fare. Eventually, in 1935, he was hired at 25 cents an hour, still the only wage earner in the family, so he had to support them all. In the meantime, Grandpa had a wonderful garden, chickens, etc., and Grandma made all the homemade bread and had good substantial food. They had nothing extra, so depended on family games, etc. However, when George got work at the mill, the whole family were cut off for leave, and he was told that it was his responsibility to sustain the household. The boys talked about their bedroom being lined with the newspapers, the funny papers, to help filled out the coals because it was a very poorly built house. Grandpa Miller had a knitting machine, so he made all the children tubular stockings, and George resorted to making his own underwear from flower sacks. While living in Queensboro, they spent many hours swimming the Fraser in the nude with a big bonfire to warm up. They also raided the farmer's fields for corn and potatoes to roast on the fire. At one point, the police were called, and all the boys had to find or buy bathing suits, which would cover them from the neck to the knees. There were quite often 15 to 20 boys swimming, skating, playing ball. They used to collect pipes, filling them half full of water, plugging the ends, and they would put them in the fire, the steam shooting them sometimes across the Fraser River. Quite a dangerous procedure. Eventually, some of the boys got fishing boats, and every 24th of May, they would head up the Pitt River for a weekend. They went hiking up the mountains. Some of the games they played were relievo, pump, pump, pull away, etc. They were very lean years, no money to buy clothing, shoes, etc., so often Grandpa would resole the shoes, give them pig shades for the summer, and as I said, knit their socks on the machine. When one could afford a haircut, the price was 10 cents, and the price of bread was 10 cents, and a quart of milk was 7 to 8 cents. While on First Street, George remembers picking mushrooms in Queen's Park, 
To test these, Grandpa would cut a dime in. If they turned black, they were poisonous and not to be eaten. He also remembers the soldiers riding by on horseback as they were recuperating the recuperation hospital was then stationed in Queen's Park. They used to swim in the duck pond, and there was also a fish hatchery there. At that time in New Westminster, there was a zoo with bear and other animals. There were also several very large exhibition buildings, which were lost in the big fire of 1929. During the Depression, there were extra policemen stationed on the bridge. They were there to make sure no one took a sack of potatoes, as there was a potato board in charge of this. In 1931, George's youngest sister Frances was the first May Queen from Queen Elizabeth's school. May Day was a very big event looked forward to, along with Elks Day, when every child was given a free chocolate bar and perhaps an ice cream cone. In the early 30s, George remembers walking a cow or a bull from Queensboro to the exhibition, being promised about 15 cents for doing it, but often didn't get the 15 cents. Westminster Highway was at that time a two-plank road, and the BC Electric Railway ran from New Westminster across the old railway bridge, which was a rail and a car bridge opening to let boats go through. As kids, they would run quickly and try to jump to get a ride on the bridge. Well, thank you very much, Marianne. That was very interesting indeed. And George, you said that you've got a powerful black background. Would you want to, is anyone like you, anybody would like to comment on that statement that was read before we go on? Is that still on? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, well, what we'll do is then just turn to Marion, and we'll pick that up later, because I have a few questions, although you've covered, covered all the areas I've been asking you on. It's a very complete statement, believe you me. Okay, Marion, would you like to go ahead? Well, to me, the Depression was very, very um, vivid in my memory, is still very vivid in my memory. I was the tenth of eleven children. We never owned a home. We never had a garden. We never had chickens, but we were a big family, close-knit, and all lived at home. The rent, as I remember at that period, was $37.50 a month, and I would be given the rent to walk across town to the gentleman who owned the home to pay the monthly rent. My brothers and sisters, as I said, were all at home. And one of my sisters worked at the office of the Timberland Lumber Company, and the other one worked at Canadian National Railway. As the Depression started, the mills and shipyards were forced to close. The only mill which ran during the Depression was the Timberland Lumber Company, which was on the south side of the river. The only means of getting to work there was by a small boat, which would come into the dock and carry the men to work each morning and then back after the shift was finished. As I said, it had been a thriving seaport. There were big ships coming in with little lumber and material from Kamenko and Troil and all these different places. When the Depression hit, my brothers all lost their jobs. If there were mills or shipyards, they were all completely out of work. My two sisters took cuts in pay, but they were still living at home and still paying their board. This was very hard on my mother, for when the boys were bringing nothing in, the grocery bill was getting higher to feed nine, ten people. There were no new clothes. Mother was very good at making over on the old sewing machine. I can remember her one morning and I can't believe it till today. She took a big toque, and the toques were double, and she pulled the toque apart, and she cut me a pullover sweater when I was five years old to keep me warm. She was very good at finding bargains at Reynolds Bell. These were, I think, held weekly, and we were all quite happy to find something to fit. I can remember that I didn't have a pair of shoes really bought for me 
until I was maybe 16 years old. And my first coat cost $5, and that was after that that I had that. The boys tried very hard to find work going from place to place, but there were no jobs to be had. We weren't on relief because of my two sisters who were paying board. Mother kept the home for us, baking bread, baked beans, potato soup, and hot biscuits. The grocer was very good and carried us. Mother sending me to the store, telling me I must stay at a very early age. Mother will give you more when she can. The bill finally got to be around $1,400 by the time things started to improve. She eventually got it paid off, but we must thank the owners of the groceries. They trusted her and knew she would pay it all. My brother had been very ill. We almost lost him with a burst appendix. There was no Medicare at that time. The bill collector would come to the door, and my mother would give him two dollars until she had another two dollars that she'd pay on this bill to get it cleared off. There were many good people helping those less fortunate. The Elks, etc. They provided hampers, and I can remember getting a hamper at Christmas and having store candies, which we never had. Mm -hmm. The years through 1929 and 35 were hard for me. I worked six months with no pay just for the experience when I graduated in 1931. I walked downtown and back each day. I didn't have any car fare. Then the part-time jobs in the Metropolitan and such stores, as well as working on the voters list if there happened to be an election. For my mother was a very good liberal, and there was the odd job, but little pay. In 1935, I was fortunate to get my first full-time office job with McMillan and Baudel. By this time, the mills had opened, my brothers were working, and so for a very short while, mother had life a little easier, as several were helping to support the house. By this time, she had found the house for $1,000, in the west end of New Westminster. They paid $50 down. The boys reshingled the roof. Mother tore off old wallpaper and painted it. And this was our home for the ensuing years. As I have said, Mother was a good manager. There was always enough food <laughs> for one more at the table or to share a bed with one more who was more needy. The Depression years really bonded people. We played cards a great deal. All of the family were into baseball, lacrosse, tennis, etc., often using borrowed equipment, but keeping occupied and out of mischief. Mother always said, so long as we never broke a leg, because she didn't have the money to pay for a broken bone. We also were very faithful attending church and taking part in church functions, doing our share where we could. And this gained as many friends, which we all stood in good stead of. That uh, was, without a doubt, a very, very complete statement, and uh, you uh, certainly, uh, I think, provide a lot of food for thought, and uh, it was uh, had a lot of uh, very strong emotional compact. You answered several questions I had in mind that I thought probably I might have to follow up with. Uh, there's one that uh, I, I think I might share with you right now, and that is uh, I'd, I'd be interested to know what sort of uh, deep-rooted feelings you had, and reactions, rather, uh, to observing uh, so many able-bodied men and women who were unemployed, but at the same time, there were people who seemed to be very well off. And uh, I would imagine you would be wondering, why is this? Why do some people have... Can I answer that? By all means, I'm asking you to... I think this is the problem today. Yes. I've said this to my husband many, many times. Yes. We rented a home, yes. but it was in a very good neighborhood on 5th Street in New Westminster. Mm -hmm. The mill owners lived across the street from us. Mm -hmm. They had beautiful homes, which mm -hmm. they owned. Mm -hmm. But we never envied them. No. 
And and we felt, we were brought up to feel, they had earned that. Mm -hmm. They had worked to build up these mills. They were giving people employment, but the people who were employed should not expect to have the same quality of life that the mill owner had. Mm -hmm. This was what we were taught and what we accepted. Mm -hmm. And I might interject here, speaking of these beautiful homes in New Westminster, I was going to mention before, mm -hmm. during the Depression, many, many of these homes stood idle. Mm -hmm. And when my mother would get depressed, she would take me by the hand and go for a walk. Mm -hmm. And we've gone through homes in Queen's Park. Somebody said to me, my, you've been in a lot of homes in the New Westminster. I have. Mm -hmm. I can remember vividly going into homes on 1st Street, 2nd Street, and New Westminster. The door is wide open. Mm -hmm. People had walked away from them. Mm -hmm. They couldn't keep mm -hmm. them up. Yes. They walked there and they left yes. them. Yes. And a lot of them yes. were turned into yes. boarding homes. Yes. They have now reverted to private homes. But in those days, a lot stood empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were many homes to be rented, mm -hmm. so people like us who couldn't own mm -hmm. could yes. always find a place yes. to live. Yes, and if you uh, looked for them, which you did, mm -hmm. yes. Would you want to say anything about that, Joyce? Not really. Not really, no. Uh, you mentioned or made reference to the fact in both cases that there were times when there was no one, as I understand, I might be wrong, no one at, at, at one time or another. Uh, who was earning a wage in their families. Uh, yes, well, there were right. two sisters in my family. But the, there were always, you know, there were two sisters and a brother, is that? No, right? two sisters were never, ever. Oh, two, oh, excuse yeah. me, I beg your pardon. There were yeah. two sisters who were never, never, were never earning a wage. That no, was, who were never without work. Without work. Was there any time when someone was, uh, when there was nobody in the family bringing any, any money. No, we had the two sisters. We they had, both took know, big right. cuts in pay. All right. But they kept yeah. their jobs. Yeah. yeah. Well, didn't you make reference to the fact, George, that was some, there was a time when there was no money coming in? Well, there was no money coming in. Um, we lived as, as mostly off our father's backyard. Yes. Off the, the yes. chickens. Yes. yes. We always had eggs. Yes. Yes. And we had uh, yes. vegetables. Yes. yes. And the fruit off the trees from yes. the backyard. Yes. And you did take relief. Yes. yes. And we, we didn't never take had relief. to take yes. relief. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Well. And I had a, a paper route, of course, mm -hmm. from when I was 11 years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But perhaps well, we might. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. You want to say something? But more? that yeah. didn't bring in very much money in those days. No, no, no. <laughs> a it paper for the month was. Fifty cents for the month. Yes. You had bought a bike. Yes. Yes. Pardon? Yes. You bought a bike. I eventually, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could just turn a moment to this whole process of doing everything possible to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And uh, making ends meet is, is an expression someday that some of the, these days rather than some of the young <laughs> people say, "What do you mean by that?" You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. foreign language. And that you mentioned some very interesting things, uh, some of the things you did. And I'm thinking of food, clothing, shelter, uh, uh, part-time, full-time jobs, and be able at home industries in order to make a living, and the kind of entertainment. You covered all these things, of course. But I wonder if we could just take a look, uh, if, uh, if there's anything you'd like to say about uh, how you made the food, the, the sufficient food go around for a large family. Um, or, not in your own family, maybe you've heard of uh, some interesting ways in which uh, other families did it. Would you like to share anything? Well, in our family, we were a big family. Yes. And I didn't mention, but we had a Spencer's grocery store downtown. Yes. And on Saturday, mm -hmm. my mother would send me down to buy a leg of pork for uh -huh. 49 cents. Yes. And that 49 cent leg of pork mm -hmm. would feed not only our family, mm -hmm. but any boyfriends or girlfriends who happened to be there for Sunday dinner. But we did always have homemade bread. Mm -hmm. We did always have a pot of baked beans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you could get a soup bone for nothing mm -hmm. in those days yes, yes. and make yes. a good pot yes. of soup out of it. Yes. 
and it was always barley and rice mm -hmm. as fillers. Yeah. We didn't have yeah. the vegetables in the garden, but no. we had the fillers. Yeah, you had the fillers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And butter. Yeah. In those days, yeah. it was three yeah. pounds per dollar. Yeah. You didn't have to spend yeah. those My father took us fishing quite often. We oh, yeah. And we would nearly always come home with five or six trout, mm -hmm. which in later years you just did. <laughs> you didn't catch a fish either. But in the, yeah. in the no. 30s, around the, yeah. in the late 20s and 30s, yeah. we used to go, he used to take us down the river, and we used to come home with mm -hmm. three, four, five mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of time. And there seemed to be more fish around, as you say, because it wasn't just a river. There's also these streams around here that had uh, rainbow trout and steelheads. And, so and the hooligan season, in, in season. May, yeah. Yeah. well, we um, used to get the hooligan, when the tide went out, we'd get the hooligans that had the red gills, off the sand, off the beach, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. take them home and mm -hmm. we cook them. They were still fresh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Georgia always speak of your father making the sauerkraut by the oh, barrel. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of making two or three meals out of one, then, isn't it? Yeah. Sauerkraut. Dad always barrel. made a big, big barrel of sauerkraut yeah. in that space, and we look forward as kids yeah. to yeah. The pounding the sauerkraut, making yeah. sauerkraut. Yeah. Sauerkraut, that was just salt and cabbage, yeah. Yeah. nothing else added. Yeah. And also, we had a lot of fruit trees oh, yeah. in the home we lived in on Fifth Street. Oh, yeah. And our mothers canned hundreds of yes, jars canned. of fruit. Yes, yes, we lived on yes, canned yes, fruits yes, and vegetables yes, yes, during the yes, winter. Yes, yes. You had fish. We never had fish. Yeah. Well, my yeah. mother canned a lot, too. Sure. Mm -hmm. There was stuff from the backyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Jams and jellies and fruits. Mm -hmm. and That's very good. Yeah. I heard of a situation, it's not during the, these particular interviews I'm doing now on the impression, but other people speaking on other occasions, saying that their mother would make a big pot of porridge in the morning, mm -hmm. fill it with dried beans and raisins, stir it, and they'd have porridge every morning. Uh, and then, talking about making two meals out of one, uh, there was always some saved for supper, and she'd make these into little patties and fry them, and that was supper. Now, that's uh, that amazing that you should say that. Do you know why? I never lived through that era, yeah. but when I was ill, growing up, yes. and have, raising my children, yes. their father once gave them fried porridge, yes. and he has never forgotten <laughs> that. Uh, the children have never yeah, forgotten, yeah, yeah. nor forgiven yeah, yeah. him. We, we used to get that a lot but of you have we lots have, of time. Yeah. There was always a big pot of porridge yeah. made in the morning, yeah. Yeah. and if there was some left over, maybe you got yeah. sliced porridge on the fry yeah. pan yeah. For, yeah. for lunch. Yeah, for lunch, you, these are the things. Well, now, that's interesting. the thing that I remember, they always set the bread at night. Yes, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the bread was set at night, and in the morning, if there wasn't any bread left over yeah. from previous days, yeah. my mother would take yeah. a slice of this yeah. dough and fry it for yeah. us. Yeah. And we just loved that. Yeah. This was our treat if we got that fresh yeah. fried bread. But we never had fried yeah. porridge. No. <laughs> there, there's another chap told me that uh, they always looked for a butcher who liked dogs. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I said, why? Well, he said, we'd, we'd go buy some hamburger, you know. And we'd say, would well, you, you have any scraps for our dog? And, oh, yes, of course, Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones. Here's some scraps. Of course, he said, we didn't have a dog. No, they used the meat. <laughs> we, we made soup out of the bones and so on. Sure, <laughs> sure. I thought that was really yeah. ingenious. And my mother also <laughs> made homemade donuts. Oh, yes. By yeah. the big pail full. Yeah. I can always yeah. remember yeah. her making yeah. homemade donuts yeah. as a yeah. treat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, anything else you'd like to say about the uh, ways of turning two meals into one or, or uh, making ends meet by wise food planning? <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. It's, it's shocking, too. It's shocking, really. Well, I really think, though, those were such good years because, as you said, we did have to make ends meet. Yes. And post-Depression years, when we came to the war years, mm -hmm. I look back on those because we were taught to sew, 
-hmm. and we had to use mm -hmm. an old garment, mm -hmm. rip it apart, mm -hmm. and this is how I learned to sew. Mm -hmm. And right now, mm -hmm. in the 1990s, I think there's as much need for programs like that yes. Yes. to get some of these yes. people active yeah. into doing things for themselves yes. Yes. and yes. making the ends meet yes. today. That's an interesting point, too, because it also brings up the whole business of carryover values. In other words, you're still thinking in, this, in terms of saving and so on, etc. Things that you, in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the, the, these things that you learned during the Depression had to go through the Depression, it's something to carry over in your life mm -hmm. after the Depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, uh, you mentioned, uh, I... Uh, I can remember some of the things uh, happening uh, during the Depression, things you were related to. Uh, I remember seeing girls coming to school in, in uh, flower sacks for dresses and so on, and, the, and the advertising the, the company on their backs. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. intentional, but that was part of the that was part of the arrangement. Uh, and uh, one of the things that's amazing too is, in some cases, you probably observed this too, that. Uh, uh, in the family of six, there were only five pairs of shoes. And the big question was, uh, when is it going to be my turn not to wear the shoes? You know? And every time it's my turn not to wear the shoes, it rains. You know, <laughs> this type of thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's the same thing with one, two pairs of pants, one for summer and one for winter, if you're lucky, and so on. Oh, so yeah. you, you go on. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess what I'm trying to do is maybe stimulate so my view, more of the thoughts that might come out of your mind. Can you think of other things that well, you... Well, yeah. I had six brothers. Yes. I was raised with six brothers. One yes. had gone to yes. the Navy and was home, and was not at home. Uh -huh. it. But, like you said, yes. on a Saturday night, yes. the yes. first one out of the house yes. was the best dress. Then the last one out, well, it was just too bad. Mm -hmm. And the youngest one grew to be six feet. So he was out of luck because the others were all five foot six mm -hmm. could wear one another's clothes. Mm -hmm. But they never argued about no. the fact that the shirt was gone or no. the tie no. was gone. No. 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 It was yeah. just accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Louis got here first, yeah. Yeah. so Mike was yeah. left yeah. without. Well, it was a real problem, and there was no alternative, so there's no yeah. argument. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And yes. we did borrow yes. clothes. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yes. And in those days, they didn't build houses with cupboards in no, because nobody had more than a, a work suit and a, a yeah. Saturday night yeah. suit. <laughs> That's an interesting that thing, thing to no cupboards. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I, I, I know I, I, I've noticed. I, I saw on a number of occasions a number of these people would build a house, but they wouldn't get as far any further than the than the building paper, uh, the what we call tar paper, mm -hmm. and that's the way it was. But uh, and uh, you mentioned no cupboards. I guess you've seen houses with no windows in them either, and just blankets covering the windows. No, no, I don't think we saw that no, here. No, no, I didn't see that. No, 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 no. And also no. in British Columbia, we didn't have the cold no, that the no, prairie no, people no, had to no, contend no, with too. No. Uh, but this home that George's father built in First Street, yes. when we went to look at that not too many years ago, yes. there was still the cupboard with the hook, yes. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No bar. No bar. That's the way they yeah. were built. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. as I said, in those days, there were homes to be rented. Mm -hmm. And it was only the well-to-do people who owned their own homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you ever run into the situation where you've heard of people never, what they say, never unpacking the suitcases because they never know when they're going to be evicted? I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard, yeah, heard of it. Yeah. yeah. And then we, we, we talked about, not in this, this series of interviews, but others, whether uh, the landlords, the, the kindest thing they could say about them, some of them, you know, mm -hmm. very unscrupulous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they give the, they, they rent the house at the highest bidder, you see. Yeah. And uh, very little notice about being evicted either and having their, their furniture auctioned off on the front lawn of a dinner table and it's whatever furniture they might have had. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? I've seen auctions. You've, you've seen that? Yeah, I've on seen the front lawn. Yeah, on the front lawn yeah. down yeah. East Street in U.S. Yeah. 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 And the people standing on the front porch watching. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've seen that yeah. happen. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
conceded a chest of drawers ready for, for uh, 75 cents and a mattress, etc. And a <laughs> what he felt, a bit of a bed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> for a dollar a quarter, a bicycle for 25 cents. You know, it, it really was a, 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 a miserable yeah. period to live through. Well, for the people who yeah. had no health at all, right. it had yeah. to be a very, very, yeah. very bad time. Yeah. Yeah. Because they said there was no medical care, yeah. there were no, no pensions. No. 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 But it was interesting too, as we finally got jobs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we all provided our own beds. Yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We bought a lamp for our mother, or a set of dishes, or mm -hmm. we were the ones that furnished the homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. There is the, sometimes the uh, process of uh, making money without having a part-time job or without uh, having a full-time job. I guess the thing they refer to now is home industries. Mm -hmm. You mentioned making, you know, putting up fruit and so forth for yourself, but also uh, for others and for those who could afford it. They, they sell, they make money on selling these things. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of them? Yes. Yes, yes, and of course there were two women who sold in their homes yes. for people who could afford a seamstress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hat makers, milliners, mm -hmm. who did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we grew up in a time of barter. I don't mm -hmm. think we ever, ever exchanged one good for another. No. No. Not, not in our day. No. Maybe on the prairies they did things. Yes, like that. that's no. true. I've heard of that on the prairies. It's true. The doctors, for example, would take a, uh, some uh, sack of potatoes or something for services. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's, that, that reminds me of something now. Uh, uh, health services in those days. You say, of course, there's no Medicare or anything of that nature. But I don't imagine you uh, ever went to the dentist either. Or no, never. No. The first time I went to a dentist, mm -hmm. I had a sister mm -hmm. who paid for me, mm -hmm. and my elder sister paid for my other mm -hmm. sister, Pat. Mm -hmm. If we needed to go to a dentist, mm -hmm. they took it as their duty mm -hmm. to pay the bill. My mother didn't have the money to do it. No. So no. Kay would pay for me, yeah. and Mel would pay for Pat. Yeah. But we were well on in years before yeah. we yeah. ever went to a dentist. Yeah. If we had a toothache, we had a sack of salt yeah. heated yeah. and put on our face yeah. or a no of cloves put yeah. in our yeah. tooth, right? Mm -hmm. To ease the pain. That's right. Yeah. Simple yeah. home remedies. Yeah. And I was just in the store yesterday and I saw big tubes of baking soda, toothpaste. Mm -hmm. I said to my daughter, that's what my mother used to clean our teeth. Mm -hmm. Baking soda and lemon juice. Mm -hmm. We never had toothpaste. No. Well, I still use baking soda today. You do? Yep. Yeah, and it is good. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. I, I, and just for a treat, I mix a little, a little toothpaste. <laughs> for a bunch of, I think we can afford a tooth, toothpaste, but yeah. I, we can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you have these habits of doing yeah, these things, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's quite true. You mentioned uh, that one of your brothers was on relief, is that right? That's right. Yes. And uh, you also mentioned, or no, it's a UN person too, if one, once uh, uh, the, the, someone working at the mill, then the rest of the family was cut off, really. That's right. That, yeah. That's uh, that's difficult. That's a difficult thing, yeah. 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 And yeah. what was the relief? What did you get? What did we get on relief? Yeah. Well, we got, uh, the relief was $12 a month. Yes. $6 in script, and you worked out that yeah. the other $6. Is that twelve points, twelve dollars a month for a, a family or an individual? No, no, per, no, person. Family. Per, per person. Per person. Per person. Oh, yeah. That was twelve dollars so, a month. That's right. Per person. Yeah, I think so. Per well, person. You're, you're well off. I thought you were poor. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I see. I, you know, it's strange. We're, we're, if this conversation was taking taking place during that time, there wouldn't be any giggling. You know, like no. I mean, that. You, in, in fact, it's it it. The old saying, or the old saying, but paraphrasing the saying, if it, if, if it weren't so serious, it would almost be comical. Yeah. Know? That's and that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, 
Did you know anybody who uh, lived in the relief camps? No. Oh, I had friends. You did friends of right? Queensboro that went up to the relief camps. I never went myself. No, no but some of your friends, some friends did. they did, ever yeah. tell you about the relief camps, what the conditions were like? Uh, well, who went there? You got well, the Thompson boys up there and in different places and down the island went to mm -hmm. the relief camp. But there were 10 cents a day is what they were paid. <laughs> we're picking shovel jobs up there. Yeah. 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 But ah, then they, they got, got their room and board. They got their room and board, yes. That's mm -hmm. right. They, uh, they had, uh, they, it said they ranged from, not bad, to absolutely horrible, the living conditions. Yeah, right? I can imagine. Yeah, I suppose yeah. so. They made their chip, uh, enamel plates, and as a result, they would get bacteria <coughs> in their mouths. And French mouth and things like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of suicides up there, you know, people hanging themselves. Right. Single men, desperate, and also homesick, you know. Oh, yes. And a lot of these people would come off the rails, running the rails. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard of one situation where a chap, and he told me the story that he too was dangerous, you know, mm -hmm. which is very understandable because he said, you know, my father said to me, you have a fine family of six boys, six hungry boys, so you'll have to leave home. I can't afford to feed six. And, it, it, and he, he broke down and cried and told me story. Mm -hmm. he, he was a man about 80 years of age. So. Is that right? Well, I, one or two of my brothers rode the rails to go to the prairies for harvest time. Oh, yes. It was the hope yes. of work yes. at the end. Yes. Of it. But um, they were quite a few years older than I was. Yes, yes. And uh, <clears throat> so I really don't have too no. good a memory of no. no. what no. happened then. No, but no. But that must have been tough, and there were people yeah. who just couldn't afford to keep the children. Oh, yeah. And of course, in yeah. a lot of places, mm -hmm. like George's sister, mm -hmm. she went out to work at housework. Yes. yes. How much did she get a month? Ten dollars a month plus. And she worked for Rogers. Rogers sugar, sugar refinery people mm -hmm. in New in Vancouver in a beautiful mansion. Yes. She had room and board yes. and ten dollars a month. Yes. Yes. That was and a good break. Well, it yeah. gave them at least housing, yeah. you yeah. see. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yes. Um, did you, besides your your uh, your brother, did you, were you, your brother, were you ever acquainted with anybody who spent some time on the rails, riding the, the rails? Not I. No, not you, not personally, but a few. No. They said that the, the ride the rails uh, is very, very difficult. <laughs> Goes without saying. Particularly when you go through a tunnel. Mm. Yeah, perhaps I mean, a lot of people fell off, you know, yeah. at that point. Uh, and uh, there were, I understand, besides young single men, there were also women running the rails too. I can believe On it. Children in the their children, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 well, um, I well, I we think there were parts who weren't as well off as we were. Yeah. And we lived here, and yes. George yes. said yes. there were gardens. There yes, were the streams, there, yes, 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 there were fish, there were vegetables, yes, yes, and there were fruits. Yes, yes, but some parts of the country, yes, no, they didn't have those no, things. No, 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 no. So we were very fortunate yes, to yes, be where we were. Yes. So you made reference to entertainment. Uh, would you like to reflect on that again or enlarge on anything? Well, we were a big family. Yes. And they played bridge. Mm hmm. When I was, from the time I was 12 years of age, mm -hmm. if they needed a fourth at bridge, mm -hmm. I could play. Mm -hmm. But if they had four people, I had to go to bed. <laughs> I see. I only got to I play see. when they needed somebody desperately. And I've seen some Saturday evenings when there have been five or six tables of cards mm -hmm. in my brother's home or our home. And we just had a sandwich and played cards. There was no money involved. Yeah. There were no prizes involved. No, no. It was just to get together. Yes, yes. And also, my mother was a lady of the moose, and they used to have card parties to raise money. And ch the church people used to have card parties to raise money. Mm -hmm. And if you had a big home, mm -hmm. you would let them use your mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. They provided the coffee and the food, and mm -hmm. you let them have your home. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, and I thought of this, mm -hmm. didn't happen in our, our home, 
but I can remember, and maybe George can remember too, that people didn't have money to pay light bills, and there used to be ways of circumventing the system. Uh -huh. Jumping so, the meter. Jumping the meter. Okay. So that you knew when the meter man came, that's what I was told, you knew when the meter man was okay. coming, you put it back in you order. Rolled it back, eh? You rolled it back. Yeah. Huh. But there was no money to pay like those things. No, so no. This was one of the that's things of the depression. That's so true. I can sure. remember hearing that. Sure. Yeah. That's just what I asked you Did you know how to do it? I have a feeling that maybe we did that too on occasion. <laughs> you have a feeling, but you can't remember. <laughs> I, I, I'm always saying I don't believe you, Josh. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> no. George has a short memory. Mm -hmm. And I, I imagine you, besides cards, you uh, sat around and uh, or entertained yourselves. Uh, other than well, we buddy. weren't a musical family. You weren't a musical Well, Some families were musical. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was one thing. We always had a piano in our house. Oh, yeah. But uh, that was because of uh, when we came to Portman. Mm -hmm. And the people were selling things off to go back because nothing had developed the way they wanted. And my mother brought this piano to my sister, and my sister did pay. Right? And when my brother Mike first got a job, he gave me a few piano lessons. That's the only piano lessons I ever I got see. because his job petered out, mm -hmm. so I didn't get any more piano lessons. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there were many, many families like the Manning family in Queensboro, they all played instruments, mm -hmm. right, George? That's right. Yeah. And you had many, many musical mm -hmm. sessions with them. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But as boys, we played football, as they called them, soccer, mm -hmm. I guess, soccer, yeah. and we played duck the rock, and we played relievo, and we played yes. um, yeah. pull a pump, pump, pull away, and yeah. different games that we yeah. played to be a bunch of gang out at night, and we or in the daytime, Sunday afternoon, and we'd all play yeah. and just yeah. But this was the home thing, entertainment, entertainment. and this was the thing in those days. Mm. It wasn't the traffic, mm. and we could go out of an evening and mm. play under the streetlights. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and there was no fear of oh. anybody harming you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Done that myself. Yeah, yeah. sure yeah. you have. Yeah. But yeah. the children of today can't do that. No, no, because it's a different no. world they're no. living in out there. Yeah, entirely different. Mm -hmm. But all those games, I mean, were simple games. They didn't take money to do it. Did you ever hear of the game uh, Anti Anti Eye Over? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we played that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you could explain it for the people on the other side of that microphone that really don't know what it's all about. Well, you would throw the ball over the house, and the, you'd have two teams, would you? And then throw the ball over the house, and if you caught the ball, you run around and. <laughs> And tag the other person before they, yeah, yeah, <laughs> before they, yeah, they got yeah, around to yeah. your side. <laughs> and sometimes they sneak around, they sneak up on you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. And then these little children hide the button on the house. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, when the stove oh. wasn't on, you'd be climbing yeah. up on top of the stove yeah. and yeah. hiding yeah. the button on top yeah. of the chimney yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And I, I spy with my ah, little eye ah, yes. my mother's quilts when we were yes. small I children. My sure. Little eye. And we, Something blue. Yeah. We would yeah. spend a long time. Uh, three in a bed. Maybe a friend would yeah. come over and three in a bed and yeah. playing I spy with my little eye. Yes. Yeah. Well, simple, simple things that yeah. we had to yeah. do. Yeah. No television. No. No radio even. No. No. And I imagine as I probably mentioned before that a telephone was a luxury too. Did you have a George phone? We had a phone in later years, yes, but it was a sort of a community phone. Oh yes. You yes. could take messages for people. Yes. A block oh. away or so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Heard of that. I guess we were lucky to have a phone. Mm -hmm. no, it wasn't everybody that had a phone. No. Mm -hmm. You uh I guess we're Acquainted too with some of the turmoil that went on, the the uh, uh, Blonde Shoreman strike of '31. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's and when they, my brothers went to work, and they were called scabs. Oh yes, right, yeah, right. because they had had no work. Yeah, yeah. And when that waterfront dispute yeah, came up, yeah. they went to work, mm -hmm. and they, everybody called mm -hmm. even I was called a scab because I'm on the street. Mm -hmm. 
because they knew yeah. my brothers had gone yeah. to work there. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing happened to Fraser Mills, too, of course, when, when they went on strike, as I understand it. And they had to, well, they were on strike for three weeks. I just read that in the book the other day. Oh, did you? But yeah. I, was, I, was, I knew some people who were involved with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and did you have uh, transits knocking on your doors, asking for food? Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I would say yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. And we also had, we would call them Canadian Indians, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Who came from door to door selling yeah. their baskets. baskets. Oh, yes, yes. They did a lot of that in the Westminster. They did a lot yeah. of that yeah. because there were some on the mm-hmm. south side yeah. of the Fraser there under the bridge, yeah. and they would come and barter the clothes. Yeah. They would give you a basket, you yeah. would give yeah. them some yeah. clothing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Every fall, the Canadian used to camp down by the mm-hmm. the um, car station, eh? Yeah. The whole body, uh, the cool and they camp. Summer. The East the oh, oh, yeah. Canadian, Canadian, Canadian. Canadian. Yes, yes. Well, they had quite a few uh, hobo villages. They'd have their tents up down there, there yeah. and they'd sell the baskets around town. Yes, yes. Well, that was uh, one way of making a living. It was a very noble way of saying. Oh, yes, it was. Very honorable. Now those yeah. baskets are priceless, if you can yeah. find them. Yes. Yeah. They were worth yeah. the bark. Yeah. For oh, sure. they really are. And they really are. They really are. And the design on them. You know, there are quite a few of those baskets down at the Irving House. Yes. Because uh, Mary uh, uh, Briggs, uh, Irving was named before she <coughs> married Mary Briggs, she would uh, buy these baskets. And they had the place just uh, swamped with them, so to speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had mm-hmm. baskets all over. And they're so beautifully mm-hmm. designed, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, just going back again to say some of the entertainment, is there anything that uh, you. Frequent the movie every once in a while? Mm, I never got to it. Oh, if we got to a movie, yeah. it was five cents, wasn't it? Yeah. To get to On a Saturday movie. morning? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. seldom got to movies. No. But we did go to church functions. Oh, I see. To St. I, Patrick's Day, yes. there was always a yes. concert on St. Patrick's yes. Day. Yes. And that was a big social function mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. ours. But uh, we seldom got down to a movie. I didn't. No. I don't think you did either. So. But May Day, as May most Day. other people's life, was a very major part of your life. Right? It was a major a thing you looked forward to yeah. because in the school you were part of the program right. that went on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, as I said, Elf Day was a, an especially good day because things were free. On Elk's Day, mm-hmm. you know, the chocolate bars, oh, the yes. yeah. chocolate bar, right. the, the ice cream, cream, cream cone, yeah. uh-huh. and uh, the boys used to have to try and catch the grease pig, George, Yes, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, if they caught the pig, they would get something for it. Is if that they a fact, the, the grease pig? Uh, oh, yeah, not, the grease right. pig. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't imagine they're doing that today, either. Oh, they uh, don't do uh, those things today. Uh, they don't do it today. That's for that sure. But those all sorts of... And another thing, yeah. at that time, there were a lot of ball games oh, in yes. Queen's Park. Yes. yes. And we would walk yes. from Agnes Street up yes. to Queen's Park yes. to see a baseball yes. game. Yes, yes. And then, <laughs> as we yes. got older, yes. and lacrosse. Yes. My brother played lacrosse. Lacrosse, of course, that was... A, yes, your, your brother was My a brother. very famous lacrosse player. Yeah, wasn't he? yeah. He yes. was just inducted into the Hall of Fame yes. just recently. And his name again for the... Uh, Bob Phelan. Bob Phelan, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And so we would walk from the west end of New Westminster to Queen's Park and yes. back. Yes. As I said, we never... Yes. And softball, my sister played softball. Yes. We would then take a turn yes. out to Sapperton Park. Yes. Because yes. she played yes. softball in yes. Sapperton Park. Yes. Yes. And my mother was an avid person yes. and yes. took part in these yes. lacrosse games and baseball games and yes. everything like that. So, yes, those things were... Cheap entertainment. Oh, yes. Very, very. I was never into sports myself. No. And no. all the rest of the yeah. family played yeah. all of them at the time. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it's very interesting, too, that they had a very uh, exciting baseball league here. The mm-hmm. Frazier Cafe mm-hmm. on the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frazier Mills. My and brother played on Frazier Mills. My brother your, Louis. Your brother Louis played on mm-hmm. Frazier Mills. Played for Frazier Mills. Yes. And my brother Louis also won a medal for uh, cross-country running. Yes, he 
his life. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. When and he was in Duke of Denmark High School. He he was a, a student of Duke of Denmark High School when he won this medal. Yeah. Was it a, a, a sports day type of thing? It was a yearly event. A yearly event. Yeah. 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 And then uh, including a number of schools. So yeah. That's right. mm-hmm. So that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And my sisters were on the basketball team. Yeah. yeah. Right? Pat yeah. and yeah. Kate yeah. both on the basketball team. Mm-hmm. So. Well, uh, I don't as, like, uh, excuse me. As Go George ahead. was going to say, and yes. you said we live in such a beautiful spot. Yeah. And we look out the window and we see the soccer teams yeah. and the baseball teams. Yeah. And George looks out and he'll say, there must be 40 balls there. And when we played, we were lucky to have one. 40 kids and one ball if yeah, you know, somebody 40, had a ball. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Tough times have changed in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So were there any uh, tricks or things that you would do that wouldn't be normally recognized as the thing to do, such as stealing apples? Did you ever do things? Oh, no, you didn't have to because you had apples. <laughs> didn't have to steal apples, no, but, but I suppose we did as kids. <laughs> <laughs> you stole the corn and the potatoes for the bonfires at Queensboro. Uh, yeah, sure yeah, you did. Yeah. You went to the farmer's fields yeah, down yeah, there and yeah. took those. <laughs> but I think every child yeah. took an apple oh, yes, they yes, saw an apple yeah, tree yeah. and didn't oh, have yeah, one yeah, in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a question I ask everybody. I'm saying, I uh, know we didn't. <laughs> oh dear. But you know, the only thing about that, that wasn't a crime in the No, world. no. You no, know? No. Nowadays it would be a crime, but yeah, it wasn't yeah, a crime. Yeah, 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 and the yeah. farmer expects it to lose a few yeah. cubs of corn and a few potatoes, I think, yeah, too. Yeah, so. yeah. No, we never did bad things. No. I no, don't think we ever no. did bad things. Well, is there, this has been very enlightening to me and interesting. You've packed a lot of information into this, and uh, some of your stories are absolutely fabulous. Is there anything else you'd like to think about or say that uh, maybe ask, maybe respond to something I shouldn't, uh, should have asked you but didn't? Uh, mm-hmm. Not really. I, I do think that we came through the best years, though. I really do think mm-hmm. that through living through the Depression, we learned to share. Mm-hmm. We learned to get along in families, mm-hmm. and we learned to share with neighbors, mm-hmm. and we also looked out for other people who were mm-hmm. less mm-hmm. cared for than we were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember many times walking across New Westminster with a box of goodies to mm-hmm. somebody my mother thought needed it more than we did. Mm-hmm. 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 So we've always said we feel Mm. We've lived through the best years. Mm-hmm. I see. Well, and some of these values and habits and customs, as you've mentioned before, carried on in your life uh, beyond the year. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. I know my, my daughter sometimes says to me, Dad, I, I, uh, I'd like to let you know that you're no longer living in the Depression, you know. Yes. <laughs> Loosen up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd always say goodbye to her. She was just annoyed when she said, Tell me the price of shoes, you see. I was like, geez, I hope that blew the shoelaces. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I wonder if you could tell me something about your family and yourself. When were you married? Uh, 1942. 1942. In New Westminster? In New Westminster. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lady of Mercy Church. Not in church, no. In the rectory. Yeah. In the rectory. Uh, the Lady of Mercy. The Lady of Mercy. Parish of 10th Avenue in Kingsway. Oh, I see. A Catholic. 7th Avenue in Kingsway. 10th, 10th, 10th Avenue. 10th, 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 10th Avenue in Kingsway. Yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, I see. That's right. Mm-hmm. We were married in September, and in January, George went in the Army. Oh, yes. Didn't have to go overseas, but was in the Army yeah. through 1945. Oh, yes. Three years. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we rented a small home. Up in Elwood Street in Burnaby, mm-hmm. duplex at that time. Mm-hmm. And then we bought our first home on 14th Avenue. Mm-hmm. And George had said about having newspaper to keep the warmth in the house. Mm-hmm. This was an old farmhouse, and there's two rooms down and two rooms up. Mm-hmm. And the bathroom was tacked on the back. Yeah. But it did have three lots. And uh-huh. George was a good gardener, and we had chickens. Wonderful. So we too had chickens. 
and that was our first home. We paid $2,000 for it. We had to have $500 down to buy that house, 25% down. And we lived there, froze to death. And in two years, we decided to sell because George had got a job with the New Westminster School Board. So we came back into New Westminster because at that time, if you worked for the city, you had to live in the city. So we came to 1008 Dublin Street and bought a home there. And then we had our third child at that point. And we lived there for two years.